Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. How do you feel when you buy something only to find that the company has rigged it in some way that forces you to buy something else? For me, let's just say I'm not a fan. Sometimes you don't have any choice. You have to buy the thing or whatever it is that they've gotten you with. Sometimes you don't. So I've got this grain mill. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what brand it is. I'm sure you can figure it out if you really want to. So it's a hand crank mill and I thought, you know, no big deal. We make bread occasionally and uh, It does a good job, but it takes a surprising amount of force and to do a, a loaf of bread or two, you know, it, it, it's a fair amount of work and a fair amount of time. It'd be really nice to be able to motorize this thing. So let's take the handle off and see what we can do to uh, attach something better here. So they have this, as far as I can tell, proprietary fitting. It's tapered. Um, basically they took a round shaft and they milled off a little bit here, here, and here. Now reproducing that shaft would be easy, but the part that fits on it, not so much because it's this triangular with a taper and fits over those flats to engage that shaft. I thought, well surely they sell an adapter. Yeah, they do. It's $30. $30 just to be able to hook a drill to this. Why didn't they put a hex shaft here or even a square, something you could put a socket on? Everyone's got sockets, but nope, nope, you can't. The fact that they've deliberately made something difficult to attach to this, and then of course they sell it. And to me, that's just a challenge. How, how do I do this without uh, paying them their stupid $30 plus shipping? So I went to Thingiverse and uh, downloaded a 3D model of it, and I printed it out in PLA, and there it is. And it fits on there well. It converts this into a hex. It should be a hex already. Let me point out, you could thread a high quality bolt in here, but if that bolt ever breaks off and you can't get it back out of the hole, you're gonna have a real problem. And I mean, look at this thing. This is a tiny little adapter. I don't wanna pay $30 for that. And I'll do an awful lot of work to not have to. <laughs> so yeah, I just printed it in, uh, on a 3D printer and I'll just, uh, I'll just do it that way. I mean, this'll work, right? Hmm, apparently not. Yeah, I guess we all knew that was gonna happen. So PLA is not up to the task. If there was only some easy way that I could reproduce this in metal. Hmm. <laughs> so here I have a little flask that's made for this purpose. So this is gonna fit on here. Then I'm gonna tape it up and fill it with plaster to the top. Then when this is removed, because that's just wax in there, that'll pop right off. That will leave me this imprint of a funnel. Once I flip it over, then this becomes where I pour in. Now, this is a little small, and this barely has enough room from the midline. So the idea would be that you pour down the center and you fill your patterns around the periphery. You don't want to pour directly into the pattern. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to rig it up and do the best I can. This isn't that complex of a part and uh, should work fine. All right, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but the metal will come down here around this and then up into the mold. And then I put a vent there to help it fill. So let's put this on here. So it has, you know, maybe a quarter inch to the edge, maybe a little less. There, I just taped it up with some duct tape. And now that is ready to pour. And I just realized it's not ready to pour. See if you can figure out why that's not ready to pour. I've got a void right there that is facing down and is not going to fill with plaster. So that's a problem. I definitely would have a big air bubble in there, which means that would then fill with metal and I wouldn't have a functional part if I don't get plastered down in that void. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, just like it is, I'm gonna get a tiny little bit of plaster and I'm just gonna, gonna fill that void up. This thing doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty, I'm not going for high detail, I just need the general shape.
Okay, now it's ready to pour. I'm going to mix up the investment. I'm going to vacuum it once, and then I'm going to pour it in. I'm not going to vacuum again. Uh, there's too much air in these PLA prints to do a second vacuuming. Uh, I think you're really asking for it if you do that. We should be able to take this off now. And what I should see in here is a funnel with some wax. Yep. And that's my vent. Wax is going to melt out, the PLA will burn out, and uh, that's what I pour into. Let's get this tape off of here. And uh, we're ready to fire it up. So the inside of it looks really good. There's some defects on the top here. Two of these were from vents. Some of this was wax that I left on there, knowing that I was going to take this to the belt sander and just flatten that right off. Oh, so here was an air bubble underneath. Um, but I'm thinking I might chuck this in the lathe and uh, make it look good. So here we are back at the grain mill with our cast adapter. Let's put that in the drill. Put it on there and see what we get.
I'm calling this a success. Simple little project, but um, a lot of use in the future. Uh, I like it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on something you'd like to see me do, put them down below. We'll see if we can make it happen. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Uh, they're really uh, helping keeping the channel going. And don't forget to check my Etsy store and see if there's anything over there that you guys are interested in. You can also comment if there's something that you'd like me to make to put in the Etsy store. See you soon. What down the